Up With Krim begins now. Right now on Up With Krim, a fast moving wildfire in Stevens County destroying homes and is burning 14,000 acres and counting. We are live on the front lines. Yeah, that's right. Fire crews are doing their debrief right now to figure out what their plan is for the rest of the day. I'll explain in just a minute. And we're going to take you outside a little bit of cloud cover to start the day. We're talking clouds clearing out in good air quality on our Wednesday. And we now know one of the victims killed in the Browns Edition apartment fire. Officials confirmed she was a mother and a grandmother. That fire is now being investigated as a homicide. This morning, we continue tracking a devastating fire in Stevens County. The corkscrew fire has destroyed at least 20 buildings, including 12 homes, while multiple agencies working to contain the fire as evacuations remain in place. Right now, our Nicole Hernandez is at the Fire Command Center at Lakeside Middle School. Good morning, Nicole. Tell us what you're seeing. Yeah, that's right. So right now I'm at that incident command post where firefighters are getting ready to relieve those overnight crews. You can take a look here. You can see they're in their debrief meeting right now, figuring out what the plan for the day is going to be. So we were able to speak with Isabel Hoygaard. She gave us an idea of what they're talking about in this meeting right now. She said that the weather from last night came in and actually calmed down the fire. They got some rain on the north end of the fire. They were able to get a dozer line on the south end of the fire and said that they were really starting to get a little bit of a control over some of that forward progression that they've been seeing. So here's a look at what you need to know about evacuations right now. The red area west of Ford and north of Tum Tum is under level three evacuations. That means get out now if you live in those areas. Level two evacuations are in place for the area south of Clayton. Southeast of Springdale is under level one evacuations. You can use it. You can see an evacuation map on crumb.com if you want to get a little bit more information about that. Now FEMA has authorized funds to help aid in this fire. Local crews say though that they just don't have enough resources. Um, so far right now the evacuate evacuation levels that we have um, I think are, are appropriate, but this fire is dynamic. It does move a lot. So if we do need uh, additional evacuations, we're trying to get that out early and be able to tell the communities that those areas are starting to become threatened as soon as we know that um, that fire is progressing towards that area. Now, this is the sixth fire that FEMA has approved help for during 2021. There's been 20 buildings that have been impacted by the fire with at least 12 homes destroyed. Now, again, we are in the middle of this meeting here. This is the crew that's going to relieve that overnight crew. When speaking with Isabel earlier, she did say that this fire is still actively burning. And even as they gain control, as they start bringing that containment up on this fire, there will still be spots burning on the inside of this fire. So expect to see smoke in the area for quite some time. Live in Stevens County. I'm Nicole Hernandez. Well, FEMA has approved Washington State's request for federal funds to help fight the corkscrew fire. The fire could potentially cause destruction, causing a major disaster. This authorization makes FEMA funding available to pay 75% of the state's firefighting costs. In Chilean County, we are also tracking a wildfire two miles southwest of 25 Mile Creek State Park. A state of emergency has been declared and level three evacuation orders are in place for people um, on Shady Pass Road down to South Lake Shore Road. Now this is currently burning over 7,500 acres with 0% containment. So in North Idaho, the character complex is now pushing almost 11,000 acres. Level three evacuation notices are in place for people who live nearby. It's 10% contained right now. Power is out for people in the level three evacuation areas. Authorities say it won't turn back on until it's safe to do so. Now we're following dozens of fires around Eastern Washington and North Idaho this morning. So for the very latest details, all you have to do is text the word fire to 509-448-2000. We'll send any of those updates directly to your phone. All right, 704 now. Let's get a look at weather. Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoose standing by in the, out, in the weather center. Indoors. 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 You're not outside anymore, Jeremy? What no, is going on? No, nah, I came inside. Actually, <laughs> I, was, I was looking at that, uh, that last fire photo we had it was absolutely incredible. There was so much weather going on in that one shot. I need to find it. I'll break it down for you guys a little bit later when I do find it, but a lot of information you can ingest from just one photo. It's worth a thousand words. I could probably talk for 10,000 on everything going on in that photo. Right now, this one, a little bit of cloud cover, but look at how clear it is. Ooh, kind of nice. And look at how calm the lake is. Oh, it's a beautiful morning to get outside. I think this is kind of our pick day of the entire week. And here's one of the many reasons why that 
right there is good air quality. An AQI of 28 means good air, means you can get outside, means you can breathe it, means it's healthy, means uh, all sorts of things. So just get out and enjoy it. The other thing, this temps in the mid 50s. It feels spectacular outside this morning. You don't need the shorts. You don't even need to wear the tank top or whatever it might have been recently when those hot mornings. Oh, it is beautiful. Our morning cloud cover is still with us. That is clearing out. We will continue to see that kind of move its way out. And by this afternoon, it's a mix of clouds and sun. We're going to go ahead and call it mostly sunny later on today. A little bit of cloud cover as we head into Thursday, but that's really about it for us. It's this. Does it get much better? The answer is no. No, it does not. When it comes to wildfires burning all around us in our hot days and windy conditions, it means that those wildfires are kind of uncontrollable. They spread without warning. They grow. They move. And today we kind of have a calm atmosphere. We have lift that pulls that smoke up and away. And we have cool temperatures. We're topping out in the mid 70s with good air quality. One of the victims from the Browns Edition fire has been identified. That's right. Now, early Monday morning, the fire took the life of Sherry Vick, who lived on the top floor of Tiffany Manor. The medical examiner confirmed she died from smoke inhalation. She leaves behind two sons and two granddaughters. The thing that she really spent the most time doing was hanging out with my daughters, being grandma with them. Now, while the family is still waiting to learn exactly what happened, they say they're grateful for any donations from the community to help give Sherry a proper memorial. The community also came together for two backyard public house employees who were affected by the fire. The West Central Pub donated 10% of all sales on Tuesday to two of its employees who lost everything in the fire. It has been an amazing feeling knowing that people that I know, people that I don't know are there for me. So Spokane firefighters joined in on the efforts and bought lunch and some of them responded to that fire. We wanted to make sure that we could help as fast as possible. When you lose everything you have, I mean, you don't really know where to turn or what to do. According to a GoFundMe page, more than $23,000 have been raised across eight campaigns for those recovering from the tragedy. Now you can find the details for that GoFundMe campaign over on our website at crim.com. It is time now for your morning rush. More news in less time. Some startling data today from the Spokane Regional Health District. Spokane County has the highest number of COVID patients hospitalized since the beginning of the pandemic. So right now there are 161 people hospitalized because of the virus. The health district also reporting 251 new coronavirus cases today and 10 new deaths were reported as well. Those deaths were from last week. Right now, 51% of Spokane County residents are fully vaccinated. The Idaho Department of Health says their state could see 2,500 COVID-related hospital admissions every week. By mid-October, there could be 30,000 new COVID-19 cases a week. That's more than 4,000 cases a day. The previous high was 2,200 a day, more than 2,200 a day back in December. 47% of the Idaho's eligible population is fully vaccinated, though. And it's been three weeks since five-year-old Michael Vaughn was last seen outside his home in Fruitland, Idaho. Local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies have looked into 290 tips that have been sent in by citizens. In a Facebook post, Fruitland police say that they have not eliminated any possibilities and that they will follow every lead in their search for Michael. Well, that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with Krim on social media. The death toll following a massive earthquake in Haiti grows as Tropical Storm Grace batters the country with heavy rain. And of course, we're going to take you outside. We've got to talk the week of weather we talked about today and what makes it so great. Well, what about tomorrow? Is there good news there? Stick around. I'll let you know.